What's up Falcon Cove? I'm Domenica Jaramillo with the Falcon News Network and this is episode 10. On December 7, 1941, Pearl Harbor was bombed. But many people don't know what happened after that. Over to Luke with the story of Pearl Harbor's aftermath. December 7, 1941, the day Pearl Harbor was bombed. Nearly 20 American naval vessels were damaged, as well as eight battleships and over 300 airplanes. More than 2,400 Americans died due to the attack, including civilians, and another 1,000 people were injured. Now, how does something this tragic happen? Well, the actual attack was a surprise from Japan, which had been edging for war with the U.S. for several years. The United States was unhappy with the disputes Japan was causing with China. And sure enough, in 1937, Japan went to war with China. The United States dealt with this issue economically, reasoning that without access to certain goods, Japan would crumble. But this backfired horribly when it made Japan even more willing to stand their ground. Now, Pearl Harbor is located in Hawaii, near the center of the Pacific Ocean, which, as smart as we were, we reasonably determined that they wouldn't attack Hawaii due to its distance, leaving it vulnerable. Now, Japan already formed a plan. They decided they were going to obliterate the Pacific fleet and prevent the U.S. from fighting back. The plan for this tragedy took several months to plan and practice before the occurrence. At 8 a.m. on December 7th, 1941, the Japanese sent many deadly planes to fill the sky. With bullets and bombs raining on Pearl Harbor, U.S. vessels and ships were sunken. Specifically, the USS Arizona. At 810, the battleship was hit, resulting in the explosion and sinking of it. Over 1,000 people died trapped inside. After that, the Japanese started launching torpedoes, killing hundreds of sailors. And less than two hours later, the event ended. The tragedy resulted in every Pearl Harbor battleship sunken, leaving the U.S. in shock. This tragic was known as the bombing of Pearl Harbor. For FNN News, I'm Luke Mercia. Thanks, Luke. That was very informative. But did you know that Pearl Harbor isn't the only day in the week with a little bit of history? Here's Cecilia with the History of Animal Rights Day. Today I'm going to be talking about International Animal Rights Day. Do you know that every year on December 10th, it's International Animal Rights Day? Well, if you didn't, now you do. And I'm going to tell you more about it. As we already know, Animal Rights Day takes place on December 10th. But this is no coincidence. The reason behind this is because December 10th just so happens to be Human Rights Day as well. And this was made to show that both people and living creatures have the same rights, even if they are different species. The Animal Rights Association, Uncaged, created International Animal Rights Day in 1998. Founders of the day stated that since animals can't vote, protest, or lobby for their own protection, humans have to do it for them. National Animal Rights Day, NARD, was established in 2011 by the nonprofit Our Planet to help give a voice to animals and to raise awareness for animal rights. Because animals can feel pain and have feelings, and because of this, it's important to realize that just like humans, animals deserve to have rights. Last year, 150 billion animals were killed in slaughterhouses all around the world, in the United States alone. 15 billion land animals and 50 billion sea animals were killed for food. 15 million animals died in laboratories and 8 million were killed in for their skin and fur. And 250 million were killed by hunters. And you may be asking, what do people do? Well, every year on December 10th, during International Animal Rights Day, animal rights advocates around the world try to convince people that kindness and respect is due to all living beings. If these animals could talk, their cries would come from everywhere. And we all have the same thing in common. We all have the right to be happy. So happy International Animal Rights Day. And for FNN News, I'm Cecilia mendes May. Wow, that was so interesting. I didn't know that Human Rights Day and Animal Rights Day was on the same date. Speaking of interesting, here's Andre with a fun and informative Hanukkah trivia.
fun. How many did you get right? Anyways, I don't know about you guys, but I've never been scuba diving. I have been snorkeling though. Speaking of which, here's Nicholas with the basics of scuba diving and snorkeling. Hi, I'm Nicholas and I'm going to be talking about scuba diving and snorkeling. Did you know that scuba stands for self-contained underwater breathing apparatus? Why can't you rise to the surface so fast? When you rise to the surface, the air in the atmosphere expands and the air in your lungs expands too. So if you rise to the surface too fast, then your lungs will expand too much and might explode. What can you see when you scuba dive? You can see all sorts of fish and coral reefs. You can also see whales, stingrays, and sharks. Here are some do's. Be scuba certified. Be in good physical shape. Have a checklist that includes everything you need to know. Always go with a buddy or friend. Have a third person that always stays on the surface. Breathe continuously. Always check your air pressure and always make a safety stop to make sure everything's okay. Here's some don'ts. Don't drink and dive. Never go diving without telling anyone where you are and what time you're coming back. Never eat a big meal before diving or if you eat, wait at least two hours before diving. Never dive outside of your comfort level. Never dive with broken or old equipment. Never dive alone and never dive while holding your breath. Never rise to the surface too fast. Here's snorkeling. What is snorkeling? Snorkeling is when you use a tube that connects to your mouth and then it goes over the water level. You use fins and you use a mask. Here are some do's and don'ts. Wear fins. Practice before attempting. Go with your friend or parent. Exhale forcefully when the water enters your snorkel. Look around and have fun. Don't. Don't touch your head. Don't submerge the snorkel all the way under the water. Don't breathe too rapidly. Don't inhale if you submerge the snorkel all the way. Don't forget sunscreen. Don't spend too much time under the water. Don't touch the animals or their homes. For FNN, I'm Nicholas Yokana. Huh. Now I know never to rise to the surface too quickly while diving. I would have never thought of that. Uh, all this talking's got me hungry. I need some food. Luckily, Oriana is next to tell us about National Cupcake Day. Happy National Cupcake Day. Yes, it's real. And today we're going to talk about some interesting facts about this day. National Cupcake Day is celebrated on December 15th. Maybe you're wondering how a mixture went from being cooked on a big container to a small cup. Well, let me tell you that before this mixture was used just for making cake, but then people started to think about how they could do it in an individual way. So they came up with the idea of baking it in these small cups, better known as the famous cupcakes. Another interesting fact about this small dessert is that the first name that was given in the 17th and 18th century was like cake to bake in small cups and then in the 19th century was changed to number cakes because they were easy to remember since to bake these little treats you only need one or two cups of each ingredient. Some activities you can do on this special day is make your own recipe of cupcakes, be the host of a bake-off fundraiser and even make cupcakes for your pets but remember to use pet friendly cupcake recipes. Here I'm gonna show you the cupcake I did. For FN News, I'm Oriana Rangel. Light cake to bake in a small cup. That's so funny. Thankfully, they shortened the name or bake cells would be a mouthful. Over to Sophia with the information on some events in the Western area that are happening soon. Hi, I'm Sophia Botero and I'm going to be telling you about some events that are going to be going on in Weston. So, to begin with, the Rotary Run for Tomorrow event already started on December 5th, but you still have time to participate because it doesn't end until December 13th. Now, at our Cypress Bay High School, there's going to be a drive-in movie theater on December 12th at 7.30pm. It's so cool, they're going to be playing 
Captain Marvel, make sure to purchase your tickets and bring your family and an ID. Now for our beloved Weston Town Center. If you haven't already gone, the place is filled with really cool Christmas decorations and lights. It looks so pretty. And every single Friday at 7 to 10 p.m., you can enjoy music under the breezeway of Weston Jewelers. Lastly, on December 22nd until January 3rd, schools will be closed for winter break. Make sure to enjoy your families and stay safe. Lastly, don't forget to always wear a mask. Thank you. I'll make sure to be at Weston Jewelers next Friday. Now, we're getting close to our holiday break. Here's some movies to watch in the break with Orlando. During the winter months, people usually celebrate different types of holidays such as Kwanzaa, Christmas, and Hanukkah. If interested in these holidays, here are a few movies you can watch with your family. To start off the list, we have The Black Candle. The Black Candle is a documentary that describes the purpose of Kwanzaa. It touches on how it's celebrated, what days it comes, which is from December 26th to January 1st, and why they celebrate it in the first place. This movie is 1 hour and 11 minutes long. As I'm speaking right now, this movie is free on a handful of sites such as Tubi, spelled T-U-B-I. This movie's rating is for PG audiences, which means you can watch it with the whole family. The next movie on our list is Mistletoe and Menorahs. Mistletoe and Menorah is a comedy romance movie for PG audiences. This movie shows a lot about what Hanukkah is and what it symbolizes. It details everything from the day it starts, which is from sundown on Thursday, December 10th, and continues through Friday, December 18th, to how long it's been a part of this world. This movie is 1 hour and 25 minutes long, and you can watch this for free on Tubi. The last movie on our list is The Star. The Star from Sony Pictures is a family animation movie that focuses on the birth of Jesus Christ, who was born on December 25th. The movie's protagonists are a handful of animals who follow the star, which in the movie is supposed to represent Jesus, and go on a long journey. In the movie, you might also recognize a few actors' voices, such as Fing Rames, Tyler Perry, and Gabriel Iglesias. To Christians, this is the whole purpose of Christmas, to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. This PG movie runs for 1 hour and 26 minutes long, and it's free on Hulu and Sling TV, if you have a premium subscription. For FNN News, I'm Orlando Cornelius. Those are some great movie suggestions. Last but not least, we're here with more information about the 23rd annual Rotary Run with Felix. Do you want to benefit a good cause? Maybe get a little exercise too? Well, you're in luck because from December 5th through December 13th, the 23rd annual Rotary Run for Tomorrow event will help you do just that. Brought to you by Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital and ranging from a 5km run all the way to a half marathon, this charity event will surely test your limits if you're up for the challenge. Those who want to take a less vigorous approach can always rely on a 5k run to satisfy their needs. All run events will be held virtually and runners get to participate at a time and location of their choice. As long as you complete the run before midnight on the 13th, it will be registered to the central database. Race times and results are tracked by RaceJoy, a smart GPS tracking tool that provides an interactive race experience for everyone involved. Every runner will be given creatively designed runner medals and high-tech dry fit shirts for the race. However, the best part of the event is undoubtedly the effect your participation has. Your contribution will support feeding the homeless and bringing back those that drop out of the social net, fighting for a better tomorrow by providing life-saving vaccines against polio, preventing the infestation of mosquito-borne illnesses such as Zika and malaria, providing clean water and sanitation to communities in need, and many more great causes. 
All race proceeds go to the Western Rotary Club's local and international charitable health and educational projects, which help support the causes previously stated. This is most definitely a cause worth fighting for, so please, if you could, sign up for the race. The sign up link will be posted in the description. I can assure you it will be an unforgettable experience. For FNN News, I'm Felix Jensen. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Domihara Mija with the Falcon News Network. Stay classy, Falcon Code!